so awesome to sit around the Word. It's always a privilege, such a privilege for me to bring the Word and to uh, convey the heart of Christ, the heart of the Father with you so that we can all hear and understand what God's plans and His purposes are for us so that we can walk in this because this is what God has called us to do. I want to talk to you this morning about already seated in heavenly places. We, we've just come through a time where we can say Jesus is alive. <laughs> he has risen. Amen. He is risen and He is alive. He is absolutely in this place. And that's not read through revelation knowledge that I'm saying that. This is just history cries out that He is alive. History says that He is risen. It's not that I had a revelation knowledge about it. You see, the climax of all events that took place in the history of mankind, in the history of the universe, found it happened on the day that Jesus became flesh. It was the climax of everything that happened, that happened when Jesus became flesh. And not just flesh, not just a human. He died for you and for me. Not just for us, He died as us. So that is the climax of everything. When He clothed Himself with humanity and when He died as us, this is the entire dream and counsel of God. That's what He's always been dreaming of. Because God is a relational God and He wants to be intimate with every one of us. He loves you. I want you to know that, that the Father loves you. He's given His Son so that you and I could be close to Him. He doesn't want distance between us. That's why we are one with Him. He's in us and we are in Him. There's no distance from Him to us and between us. So God's dream has been from the beginning was to be intimate with us. I just said to someone yesterday, to William then, you know, in Isaiah 65 verse 1 it says, I revealed myself to those who did not ask for me. And I showed myself to those who wasn't looking for me. And I shouted, here I am, here I am. God is playing hide and seek with us. And when we can't find Him, He shouts, here I am. Remember my children, we used to say, where are, where are they? I'm looking for my children, where are they? And then they jumped out behind the the, wherever they were, they just shout, here I am, here I am. It's the same, God's playing I and seek, and He's saying, here I am. Well, you can't see Him, He shows Himself. He reveals Himself. Why? Because there's an intimate relationship that He's after. There's like this divine romance that's taking place where God the Father wants to romance us. He loves us. Why? Because we come from Him. We are from Him, that's why. So history has a lot to say about Jesus. And I want to just say a few things that, that history says about Jesus, that I don't have to have revelation knowledge. First, He was announced by angels. He was born in a manger in Bethlehem, and He had a father and a mother, Mary and Joseph, who brought Him up in a town called Nazareth. He, was, he preached the kingdom of God for three years and doing miracles and establishing His kingdom in the hearts of men that He did for three years. He was betrayed by Pontius Pilate, by, 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 by Judas Iscariot, delivered to Pontius Pilate. And there, he was fed. there was nothing found wrong with Him. That's history. That's what history tells us. He was crucified on the hill called Calvary, Golgotha, which means the skull, skull. He rose, on, he was buried in the garden tomb, and he rose on the third day, three days later, just as he said he would. And he appeared to many people, and more than 500 people saw him. It's not that just his disciples saw him and, and they lied about it. More than 500 people saw him. History has, has got the account of this. All these things happened, and then he ascended into heaven. And there he went to sit on the right hand of the Father. That is part of history. It's not, it's not that I am saying this is my revelation. This is what history tells us. And this is the truth. So although it's essential to have knowledge about Jesus. It's good to know about Jesus. It's good to know all these things that I've just told you. Here. What we really need is a revelation of the risen Christ. We need a revelation of the eternal Christ, the one that was, the one that is, the one will always be. We need a revelation of Christ. 
Because a lot of us know the Jesus of the Bible. But not all of us have the revelation of Jesus, the eternal Christ. What He is and what He has done. Paul speaks of Christ, but he speaks from an eternal point of view. Paul never knew Jesus in the flesh. He never knew Him. He didn't see Jesus. He didn't walk with Jesus. He didn't eat with Jesus. He never knew Jesus. In actual fact, he was, he was, he was killing people that were following Jesus. So here we see Paul on the way to Damascus and on his way there, he was on his way to go and kill people or to bring them before uh, 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 the, the religious authorities of those times so that he could kill them because they were followers of Christ. And Jesus appeared to him. The risen Christ, the eternal Christ <laughs> appeared to him. And he was like a blind man and he was blind for some time until Ananias spoke to him. And pray for him and his eyes opened up. So we see in John 17, 21. Jesus is praying for you and for me. He's praying for every one of us. <clears throat> and he says, I pray for them. That all to be joined together as one. Even as you and I, Father. Are joined together as one. I pray for them because one of us. With, to be one with us. So that the world will recognize that you've sent me. For the very glory that you have given me, I have given to them. So that they can be joined together as one and experience the same unity that we enjoy. Isn't that powerful? You live fully in me and, and I know I live fully in them. So that they will experience perfect unity and the world will be convinced that you have sent me. For they will see that you love each one of them with the same passionate love. That you have for me. He says, Father, make them one as we are one. Let the unity, let the oneness, more than unity, let the oneness of the Father and the Son be revealed in us. That's God's heart for us. Christ and the Father is one. And Jesus wants, 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 the, wants to, when He hears the Father, He speaks what the Father speaks. When he, when he sees the Father do something, He does what the Father does. And it's so important for us in the oneness, it's so necessary for us to listen to what God is saying and speak what He's saying. We can't just, I see, I, I just saw uh, on, uh, on Facebook, I think, some preachers saying, uh, ideas, preaching ideas. So I said, you know, if, if I've got to get preaching ideas from you, maybe I'm not listening to God. You see, we've got to listen to what the Father says. The Son knows His voice. The Son knows the voice of His Father. If you hear your father, you speak what your father speaks. If you see your father do something, you do what your father does. I don't need people to, to give me ideas to preach about. I need to hear my father. Because as he speaks, I will speak. I will say as he says. So oneness amongst us is so important so that we can corporately say the same things. So that we can corporately speak as Jesus is speaking, as what the Father is speaking. We're living in a time where there's famine of the word. Truly famine of the word. People are hungry. They, they, they don't know it, but they're hungry for God. They're hungry for the word. They want to see. They want to see Jesus. And they're asking, would the real Jesus please rise up? We want to see the real Jesus. People are looking for Him. It is time that we... As the sons of the living God portray the real Christ to this world through our lives. So that they could see Him in our lives. So that they can glorify Him when they see Him. So we're living in a time but I believe that God is, as, as, as His presence comes in and as His word is revealed, as Christ is revealed, the anointing is going to lift. The anointing that will heal the sick, cast out demons and do mighty exploits. I believe the anointing is here. Why? Because Jesus is here. If you believe that with me, just say amen. amen. God is here. And he's, he wants to do mighty things in us and through us. Through His Holy Spirit. But He wants to do it because He loves you. Because He cares for you. So the greatest demand for us today is to have a fresh revelation of Jesus Christ. Not just the old stories. But to get a fresh revelation, what is God saying to us? 
We're living in a time where we need to, to be, be picked up by God's revelation and, and soar with Him above the clouds, above the storms. It's, a, it's, it's all about our identity. It's all about understanding who we are, our, to know our origin. We see in Genesis 1 how God created the fish, spoke to the water and created the fish, spoke to the, to the earth and created the animals of the earth, spoke to the air and created the birds. From every place, but when he created mankind in one, Genesis 1, 26, he spoke to himself. There's a different substance that God used in creating you and me than he used to create the animals or the fish or the birds. Different substances. You see, and it's, it's like if you are taken out of that from which you were created, you will die. It's like a fish. You can't take a fish out of the water and die. You can't take me out of God, I will die. You can't take humanity. That's what happened in Adam. When they were taken out of God, they died. But God's plan was to send His Son. So that He could reverse the curse. So that we can have life and life in abundance. You see, we come from Him. He is our Genesis. He's our Father. We are coming from Him. And that means there was never been a time that we did not exist. We have no beginning and no end. I'm not talking about your body. We are spirit. Having a soul and living in a body. This body is but a tent. It's destined to go back into the ground. But we are not. We can never see death. You will never see death. And I'm talking about eternal death. You will never see death. You can't die. I want to clarify what I'm saying now because this must sound very, very off to many people. But although this body dies, you will not die. You are an eternal being because you come from the Father. There's something of the Father that He, that he blew. He, he blew His Ruach, His Spirit into us. And because His Spirit, which is eternal, is in us, that's who you are. I am a son of, a living, of the living God. So are you. You are daughters of the living God. This is, this is who we are. This is what God called us to be. This is what He made us to be. He gave us all different colors and all different looks and all different... I'm so glad no, not, we, we don't look the same, all of us. I'm so glad we have, we have some different colors as well. We've got brown, black, white, yellow. You know how interesting is that? But inside we are one with God. We are Him. And He is us. He's in us and we are in Him. And that's why there's this eternal romance where God wants to romance us. But you see, we've got to understand we have no beginning, we have no end because we are in Him. We've always been, even before the foundations of the world, the Bible says. In 2 Corinthians 5 verse 19, For, Christ, for in Christ we are a new creation. The old things have passed away. Look, everything has become new. That's in Christ. Jesus is beyond the place of just risen. We know He's risen and He's alive. But He's beyond that. He is seated at the right hand of the Father. Hallelujah. He's seated. The Bible says in Hebrews 10, 12, it says, But this man, after he had, or he had offered one sacrifice for sins forever, just think of it, the tabernacle of Moses, the tabernacle of, or the, the temple of, of Solomon. There was constantly burnt red heifers and I don't know what, everything. They had a lot of offerings. There was no seating in, the, in those places because those, 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 those priests could never rest. They could never rest. But listen to this. After he sacrificed one sin offering forever, he went to sit down at the right hand of the Father. From that time, waiting till His enemies be in His footstool. Jesus conquered the death. He's waiting God to place the enemy of death under His feet. That's where God wants to place it. You know the olden days, the kings, when they, when they conquered the other kings, they used to bring, put a, 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 a chain around their neck and bring them to the king and he could put his feet on them, make a footstool on them. Jesus already conquered death. He conquered death. Cancer. He conquered every sickness that we are faced with. And I'm saying to you this morning that He's placing them under His feet. And guess where you are? 
guess where you are? We're not just a hurt bug. We are seated with him in heavenly places. Hallelujah. We are seated with him in heavenly places. That is our place where we are in a position of executive authority. God has given you the authority to rule over all the storms that are, you are facing. He's called you to reign over every circumstance that is coming your way. And He's giving you the joy of the Lord, which is your strength, to stand in times of adverse fightings. Knowing that you are with Him and He's with you. Jesus is not only seated, you are seated in Him because you are one with Him. We are in that position of executive authority. Christ is our hope. Of glory, if you believe that, just say amen. amen. So, no, life is no longer a game of snakes and ladders where, where the dice determines whether I'm slipped by a slum or whatever. Life is not like that anymore. I'm in a place where, where Jesus finished. When he cried out, Tetelestai, it is finished. That's when the church was born. That's when the church was born. His finish is my beginning. It's your beginning. We don't have to, to go to the next level in Christ. You are already there. You see, religion will always take you to somewhere where they think you could go. Well, I want to say to you this morning, you are already there. His finish is your beginning. You don't have to fight to get there. You are there. You, are, you must just accept it by faith. You are the church was born when Jesus cried out, it is finished and died. That's when we were born. When He died, we died. When He rose from the dead, we rose from the dead. When He ascended into heavens, guess what? We ascended with Him into the heavens. And when He was taking His seat at the right hand of the Father, guess what? You are seated in Him at the right hand of the Father. The right hand meaning the place of executive authority over everything that comes against you. A place of executive authority. You see, our identity, we cannot be defined by our status. You can't be defined by how much money you have or what job you have or, or where you find yourself in life. You can't be defined by this. I can only be defined by the finished work of Christ. The finished work of Christ defines me as a son of God. I am his own. He made me his, his own. I belong to him. That's what it is. His finished work defines me. So we are already fully represented and included in Christ. He represents us and we are included. And you know what? He's accepted you. Just as you are. I remember I told someone last night... I remember when I came to the Lord, the first time I, I, was, I was in a drunken stupor. I had too much wine. And I was lying on my bed. And I put my hands in the air. I come from a church where nobody puts hands in the air. I, I lay on the bed, I put my hands in the air, and I looked through the window. And I saw this <clears throat> yakaranda tree, and I saw the stars on the other side. And I cried out to God and I said, if there's a God in heaven, help me. You know what? He did. He loved me even while I was still a sinner. He loved me when nobody else would want to look at me. He accepted me. He made me his own. Isn't that amazing? I bet you have the same story. Somehow just a different turn, but we all have the same story. We all have a story. Each one of us has a story. You have a story, and I would love to hear your story. I picked up on the guy on the, on the road the other day. He's, he was one of these, these guys that's homeless people. I, I picked him up just to hear his story. And I, when he got into the car, I said, please tell me your story. What's happening in your life? What happened? He said, sir, I made some serious mistakes. I said, well, join the club. We all made serious mistakes. <laughs> There is nobody that can say, I did everything right. All of us made some choices in life that was detrimental to us. Join the club. I told him. But you know what? The power of making mistakes is you don't have to live in those mistakes. You can change it and change your life 
forever if you change your mind about who you are. If you know that you're a son of God, if you know who you are, you can change your life. I want to tell you this morning, people, each one of you has a story, but you can change that story into his story. Your story can become his story. And it is actually his story, and I'll tell you a bit later about that. But we cannot be defined by any of these things, but by the finished work. Ephesians 2, verse 5 says, Before we knew about it, while we were still dead in our sins, God made us alive together with Christ and raised us up together with Christ and seated us together with Christ in the heavenly places. While we were still sinners, God has already done it for us. It's not something that I had to, you know, I've got to be good enough, I've got to live a holy life or something. No, I was still a sinner. He raised me up. And He made me sit in heavenly places with Him. Even 2,000 years ago, before I was even born, people, before you were born, He made you sit <laughs> at the right hand of the Father in a position of executive authority. If that excites you, just say Amen. amen. Hallelujah. That's something to shout about. You are fully represented in Him. You are seated in heavenly places, high places. So heaven is not our destination or our goal. Christ is. Christ is our destination. He's our goal. I'm not looking forward to see to be in heaven. I'm looking forward just to see Him. Even better than I can see Him now. If, if that is heaven to me, then that would be heaven to me. Just to see Him for who He is. Know Him by, his, by who He is. Colossians 3 verse 1 says, If you were raised with Christ, seek those things which are above, where Christ is, sit at the, sitting at the right hand of God. For you died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. With Christ, when Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with Him. He says, you are in fact, raised together with Christ. So the moment you, the grave opened, the stone rolled away and Jesus walked out of that grave, that very moment, guess what? You walked out of that grave. 2,000 years ago, I walked out of a grave, guys. I want to tell you about the time that I was dead. When Jesus died, the Bible says, I died. You died. When He was risen, he, when He rose from the dead, guess what? We rose with Him. When He sat at the right hand of the Father, we sat with Him. So this is a powerful thing to know. The moment the grave opened, we walked out with Him. Jesus is our foundation. He is our living foundation. Ephesians 1.10 says, God's purpose in the fulfillment of time is to bring together everything in the heavens and the earth into one. God's purpose is to bring everything that is in the heavens and everything that's on the earth, bring it into one. Everything, time, people, everything. He would sum up all of these things in one event on the cross. Everything in the heavens and everything on the earth was summed up in one event on the cross of Calvary when Jesus died and when the stone was rolled away. We see the enormous impact that this has on the finished work of Christ. What's so amazing about this all is that we were in Him when He went to the cross. When He died, you died. This is why Paul says if one died in 2 Corinthians 5 verse 14, he says if one died, all died. If one was resurrected, all was resurrected. That's Paul's gospel. That's the gospel of God, of Jesus Christ. This is what Paul was telling. If one died, all died. All of humanity, all of time is present in Jesus. All. So in Christ, every man is represented. You, I, everyone is represented in Christ. When he went to the, to the cross, he went to the cross for the Muslims, for the Satanists. He went to the cross for everyone. We just need to hear the gospel and believe. We need to hear this good news and believe. That's all. We, that's why I can never sit still. My purpose in life is to make people see. Make them see who they are in Christ Jesus. They need to see who they are in Christ Jesus. This means, this means one thing, that his story is actually our story. 
And our story is actually his story. Isn't that amazing? This is a story that weaves through the eons of time and the peoples and all the stories and bring all the stories into one story. God want your story, your story, your story, your story, my story. All the stories weaved in together, becoming His story. Because He died for you. And your story became His story. When I cried out in that drunken stupor to God, said, if there's a God, help me. That very moment, my story became His story. He received me just like I was. The conclusion is that you are worthy. I want you to know you are worthy. You are accepted. You are loved. You are loved. You are somebody special. I want you to remember this forever. You are true sons and daughters of God. That's who you are. That is who you are. Now think about the consequences of our inclusion in Him. We are included in Christ. What is the consequences of being in Christ? Think of that. Colossians 3 verse 2 says, It says, Seek first the things which are above. If you are seated with Him in heavenly places, think of the things there. Think of the things there. Engage your thoughts. Into throne room realities. Let, let the throne room of God, the thoughts of the throne room be, be the stuff that, that governs your thought patterns. Let, let, the, let, the, let the, 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 the mentality of heaven be your mentality. Let us not look at anything else but see our identity in Him because our identity is in Him. We are living in a time when people don't even know who they are in Him. They don't know if they're women or men or whatever. They're still deciding some of them. It's crazy. You know, if you lose sight of your Creator, you get to those places where you don't even know who you are. We are sons of the living God, daughters of the living God. And if you don't know that, if you don't know Him, you will never know yourself. Because we are looking into a mirror and we wonder, when, Lord, when will I see myself? But the moment that you see a revelation of Jesus Christ, that very moment you see yourself face to face. Because He's not just an example for you, He's an example of you. You know what God thinks about you? You know what God's thoughts are towards you? God's thoughts towards you is Jesus. Jesus is what God thinks about you. Jesus is His thoughts towards me. He loves me. He's accepted me. He's, he's embraced me. And He's made me an ambassador of the kingdom. And as an ambassador of the kingdom, I am here to take the culture, the atmosphere of the heavenlies. And I'm, I'm here to make that the reality around me. This is the culture that we need to, to bring to the world. is the culture of heaven. The culture of the kingdom. And as an ambassador, you are called to make that reality, this reality, as it is in heaven, let it be in the earth. As it is there, Lord, let it be here. Jesus says in Matthew 28, verse 19, He says, All authority is given unto me. Go. In heaven and earth, go, therefore. So all authority for you and me to reign in this earth is given to us. In Christ Jesus, because we are one with Him. If you believe that, just say Amen. So we cannot be, 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 be led around by our circumstances. We must be led around by what God believes about me. And by our heavenly places, we must be led around by the truth of the scripture, which says all authority is given to Jesus and Jesus is in us. We should rule and reign over all these things. Are you with me? That's what God wants us to, wants us to do. Colossians 3, 2 says, seek these things that, that, that are above. We're already there, seated with Him. Seek the things that are above. Be, be affectionately acquainted. You know it intimately. What God wants for you. And that will keep you straight. So that you will not follow the wrong things of the earth. That will keep you straight. Renew your mind daily. Renew your mind daily. Let your desire be after God. I have a desire after God. Colossians 3.3 3 says... For you died and your life is hidden in Christ, in God. 
So when we died, our, our lives became hidden in Him. You're in a place of, immu of immunity if you are in Him. I want you to know that. You're in a place of immunity. God has made you immune in Christ Jesus against these things. So your union with Him broke every association you had with this world. That's what it means. There's no association with this world if we are constantly, consciously in union with Him. Knowing that He's within me. Since we two or three are gathered in my name, I'm there, I'm there, I'm there. <clears throat> He's in us. He's in you. When you entered in here, so I want to say the Christ that dwells in me greets the Christ that dwells in you. The Christ that is in me greets, says hello to the Christ that is in you. That's what God wants us to know. <clears throat> See yourself as, as, a, as, as in a fortress where you are hidden in Christ. I'm in a fortress, nothing can touch me. Why? Because I'm hidden in Christ. So by entering into this, <clears throat> in, a, in, in Jesus entering into our human existence, He entered into His temple. <clears throat> People, they can build ten temples in Jerusalem. I don't care how many temples they build. It can never replace the place where God abides now. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. He will not go back to a place made with hands if He could stay within us. There's two words for temple in the Greek. The one is, is uh, hirion, which means a temple made with hands. Then there's another temple, the temple that that uh, that God desires to dwell in or where He dwells in, and that's a temple not made with man's house. It's called Naos, which means He's dwelling within us. We are the temple of the Holy Spirit. We are God's place. So when Jesus came into a human existence, He entered in his, into His temple, <clears throat> and He placed eternity in our hearts. Just think about it. Somebody says we're going to have eternal life one day. I've got news for you. You're already an eternal being. You've always been eternal. It's not that you're going to be eternal one day. You are eternal right now. Even though your body, which is your, te your tent, may fall to the ground, you will never die. Listen to what I'm saying. You will not see death. You don't even close your eyes and open, oh, I'm in heaven now. No. You just walk over. You will immediately know you are there. You, it will, it's as if, if, as if God will open the, the curtain so that you can see from this side to that side. You just walk up. You cannot die. As I say again, your body can, but you can't. That's so important. God is confident. Through Jesus Christ, He's confident that we will remember who we are. You see, when Adam sinned, we forgot who we are. We lost our memory. And we forgot who we really are. But God is so confident that in Christ we will start to begin to, to, to remind ourselves of who we are. God wants us. Why? Because we began in the heart and the mind of God. We began in His mind. That, that word when He says, in the beginning, really means in the mind of God. In the beginning God created. In the mind of God, God created. Just think about it. When I thought about it this morning, while I was sitting in and, 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 and preparing for this morning, I just thought, my God, you're so vast. You're so vast. I can't even start and begin to think about your mind. You thought about all these things. All the colors and all the, the detail in, in, in creation. Not just creation, even the small little things. Like a ladybird. These small things. How on earth did you have the mind to think of the detail of everything? It's just you so vast, so big, so... Oh, and I just realized I'm in Him and He's in me. Isn't that amazing? Praise the Lord for that. So John 14 verse 20 says, In that day... What day is He talking about? In that day you will know that I am in my Father... And you are in me and I in you. When Jesus gave his life, the moment that you believe, you will know that he's in the Father and he's in us. The Father is in him and he's in us. We are hidden in him. 
We are in a place of, of safety in God, in Christ Jesus. So fill your life with this new way of thinking, a new order of life. When you died, when, when Jesus died, you died. When Jesus rose from the dead, you rose from the dead. So what defines us now is Christ, His death and resurrection. That defines us. I'm not defined by what people say about me. I'm not defined by what I think about myself. I'm defined by what He has done for me. That's who I am. So Christ in whom the fullness of God had dwelt defines you. He defines us. Okay, so that's important to understand. So Colossians 2 verse 9 says, In Him dwells all the fullness of the God in bodily. So in Christ, everything about God is in Christ. So is Christ God? Yes. He is God. Jesus is God. And you are complete. Then he says you are complete. Say I'm complete. complete. You are complete in Him. <coughs> you are complete in Him. Who is the head uh, of all principalities and powers. There's no authority above Him. He is the head of all authority. He is the authority. So the secret life that we have is our union with Christ. Our union with Christ. And now the Bible says in Colossians 3, 4, When Christ who is our life appears, then you will also appear with Him. When He's revealed, you will be revealed. When you see Him, you'll see yourself. When you have a revelation of the eternal Christ, you will have a revelation of who you are. You will see yourself as He sees you. He comes in, not just an example for you, but He comes as an example of you. He is what God is what he thinks about you. So the exact life that is exhibited in Christ is now represented in us. For as he is, 1 John 4, 17, for as he is in the heavens, so are we in this world. That exact life is now mirrored in our lives. We are being co-revealed with him. We are co-revealed the, at the same time as he's revealed, I'm revealed. As he's revealed, you are revealed. As you see him, you see yourself. That's what it means. We are joined, joined in oneness with Him. Just as His life reveals you, your life reveals Him. Just as His life reveals you, your life reveals Him. There's a verse that that's, this verse is mostly translated for the future. Now instead of, there's a, there's the word that's used there is translated, uh, in, in, a better translation would be instead of, uh, uh, instead of saying when Christ, say every time Christ is revealed, we are being revealed with Him. Not when Christ, every time He's being revealed, we are revealed. That's a better translation for that scripture. So Paul declares our joint glorification in Christ at the same time. We are glorified in Him, joint with Him. As He is, so are we in this world. In Acts 17 verse 28, He says, In Him we live. And You know, Paul was speaking in, the, in Corinth. And there was a lot of, lot of uh, 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 gods that they were worshipping. And He was standing up there and he, and, and he spoke about the unknown God telling them about Jesus. The unknown one. And then He said, You know what? One of your philosophers, it was a Greek philosopher, and Paul was quoting this Greek philosopher. So God even speaks through, through people who don't know Him. This Greek philosopher, he says, one of your philosophers says, in Him we live and move and have our being. Quoting a Greek philosopher, let me tell you, it is in Him that we live and move and have our being. We, he is our everything. He is our life. We are in Him and He is in us. There where Christ is, there is life. I want you to know Christianity is supposed to be a kingdom lifestyle. It's not supposed to be certain days that we come together and now we suddenly are religious about these days. Christianity is a lifestyle. In Him we live and move and have our being. In Him we live and move and have our being. I want to encourage you this morning to look unto Jesus. Because He's the one who's going to give you life and life in abundance. When you know the word life, it says zoe in the Greek. That means the same kind of life that God himself enjoys. God wants to give you. The same quality of life. 
that God Himself is enjoying. He wants to give that life to you and to me. And He's already given it to us through Jesus Christ. In Him we live and move and have our being. If you believe that, just say Amen. I want to pray. Let's just pray this morning. Father God, thank You. Thank You for this Word that brings deliverance to our mindsets of, of, of living in stormy times. But that we can place our mind above the storms and above the things that come against us. And that we can place our minds in heavenly places where we are already seated in a place of executive authority. And from that position we live and rule and reign and live our lives. We ask now, Father, that you would renew our minds according to your words in Christ Jesus. Your word is, is, is a person and, and that person is Christ. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Thank you, Lord, for revealing your Word to us. Reveal Christ to us. Let us see through the layers of, of, of things that are trying to hold back who you are. And let it open up right now, and let us see face to face who you are and what you are. And let every person right now experience the love of Christ, the Zoe life of Christ, the same quality of life that you yourself are enjoying. Right now, Father, help us to know and understand that we are one with you. One with you as you are with your Father, Jesus, and your Father with you, our Father. You are also one with us. And we are one with one another. So that there can be a corporate expression of Christ in this earth. I represent Christ, but we also represent Christ. And as we hear you speak, we will speak. And as we see you do, we will do. Let your name be glorified in Jesus' name. I thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that we can be healed right now. Everybody in this place, if there's healing needed in your body right now, I speak healing over your body in Jesus' name. I release healing. I release from a place of executive authority, I release God's healing over your body. Let it touch. Let it change you. I thank you, Lord, that you make a way for people. There are people here that are desperately looking for, for resources. I know God is our source and our resource. I speak life right now in the name of Jesus. And I release it over you. And I thank you, Father, for your word that, 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 that says I am awake over my word to, to bring it to pass. Be, be awake now, Father, over your word. In Jesus' name. I praise you. Thank you for your kindness and your loving grace. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you so much for listening to this word. We're going to sit at the table. And we're going to just enjoy...